Hey guys, Mark Flockhart here. We're going to go over the different insurance coverage options for Florida specifically. We're going to go over the minimums, what you should cover, um, different levels of insurance, and what you should watch out for. We'll also go over some of the major discounts that Florida offers that other states don't offer. So keep watching and hope you enjoy it. All right, we're going to dig right in. Don't mind me if I'm looking down here. I wrote some notes down on my cell phone here. Uh, woo, I got my, uh, my mouse that I just chucked across the room. <laughs> this is going to be a little bit of fun. We're just going to go through what Florida requires. We're going to start at the basics, what you should carry, and then when you call insurances, what they're going to ask you, what to expect. Depending on the companies you call, they're going to... You know, have a great experience. Other people, they just, you know, they're just not the phone people. So, you know, don't worry about it. It's, you know, you call a couple insurances, you get some great people, you don't get some great people. Don't let that deter you as far as the company. Because there are some, some really good service companies that their sales team isn't so good with. If you don't know me, I've been in insurance uh, last uh, five and a half, six years. I am licensed in 30 some odd states. I don't know exactly how many anymore. Um, lost track. I'll look it up for one of our videos here. I'm really knowledgeable insurance. I sell insurance in Florida, Michigan, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland. I mean, just you name it. I know most of the guidelines. It's a lot to remember up here, but a lot of them are very similar. However, Florida is a lot different. I want to go over a little bit of the history of why Florida is the way it is. A lot of people in Florida are noticing the rates are really high. Or if you're new, you don't realize that the rates are high because you haven't ever seen the other rates. Florida is ranked in the top 10 for the highest insurance rates in the nation. If I'm not mistaken, by the time I'm doing this video, it's in the top five. And there's a few reasons that it is. You can partially thank Miami because Miami, Florida is one of the highest risks. They have very high end cars. They have a lot of traffic. They also have a lot of theft. That is causing the rates to go up. Unfortunately, that's a downfall. Not just that, you're saying, well, I don't live in Miami. I live in Orlando or I live in, um, you know, in Kissimmee. Uh, you know, you can't tell that I've lived in Florida before. If you ever drive around Orlando, if you've never been to Florida or if you're watching this video, most likely you live in Florida. But if you've ever been there, you guys are crazy. <laughs> Your driving is nuts. I mean, it, it's not used specifically for Floridians. It's a lot of visitors. So if you're in Orlando, I used to live in Kissimmee. And I'll give you two real quick stories. I was driving down the road. I come up to a four-way stop. I stopped. The other car came in, stopped. I went to go. He started blaring his horn, honking and flipping me off like, hey, what are you doing? I was like, I've been here for five seconds. I'm ready to go. So that's the type of driving. Uh, the other thing, if you're ever by like a mall there, you watch a light turn red and you see car, 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 car. Three cars go through the red light. It's crazy. A lot of it has to do with tourism. So that is causing a lot of the insurance rates to go up in the Orlando, in the Kissimmee, and, and that central Florida area. Well, that doesn't help because Miami down here is having tons of claims, tons of fraud. Um, you know, and, and it's just, it's grown between those two. It's kind of branched off into the other state or the other areas. We got a lot of visitors coming for, you know, Disney World and all that, and they don't know how to drive. They're not ready for the faster paced driving, and that's the way Florida is. That's a big reason the rates are higher than normal. Right now, according to the National Insurance Crime Bureau, I'm just going to hold this up and read it. <laughs> according to the National Insurance Crime Bureau, uh, Florida accounts for around 20% of all accidents that are staged, so fraud, Okay, in the U.S., whereas five main metro areas are ranked among the top ten cities facing auto insurance losses. Uh, these are West Palm Beach, Miami, Orlando, Haley, 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 um, in Tampa, Florida. One of the main reasons, not just the crazy driving and everybody going everywhere, the fraud and all that stuff, but one of the other main reasons Florida is so expensive for insurance retirees. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to put you guys down, I know, but most of the accidents in Florida are people that are driving 35 in a 55. And it just, it creates chaos. When you're driving slow and this guy's trying to get to work, he's 15 minutes late, he didn't want to pay the $5 fee to get on the, you know, to get on the, the highway that you got to pay for. So those are some of the reasons. Florida, big, biggest things to take away. Florida is the number one fraud state in the nation. 
or one of the number one fraud states in the nation. I, I believe they're number one. Lots of fraud, lots of false claims. If you ever hear on the radio after 911, call 411. You know, they're just collecting on so many claims. There's so much fraud, so much payout that it's forcing the prices to go up. What do I mean by that? It's not just that type of fraud. You heard me mention Miami, um, different Dade County, different areas like that. The problem is these guys realize that they're paying twice as much. That specific county, Florida's broken up into zip codes. So that specific county of Florida is actually double the price of Orlando. You're going to pay 20 some hundred dollars a year on average in Miami where you're going to pay about 1200 or 1000 a year for insurance depending on the coverages in Orlando or uh, the northern regions of Florida. Biggest thing, takeaway, it's not that expensive if you're in different states like Michigan, Detroit, oh my goodness, that's, that's the highest one, 10,000 a year. Yeah, think about that. The thing about Florida with, with Florida is those people that live in those counties down south is the fraud that some of them are creating. Now, I'm not saying everybody from Miami is fraud and they're cheating and everything like that. There's great people down there. The state's broken up into zip codes. So this co zip code has this many claims with this, each company rates a zip code. State Farm, they know that this zip code has this claim, this zip code has this much fraud, this code has this. What a lot of people started to learn is, well, why don't I just pretend I live up here? Why am I paying insurance down here? I'm driving the same car, it's not that bad. I'll just tell him I live over here in Orlando. My buddy, my buddy lives up here, I'll use his address. That became a huge, huge issue with insurance because they're cheating the system. They're creating or committing fraud, insurance fraud. It, it doesn't feel like it because you're just like, ah, it's not right, they shouldn't be charging me this much. But that's the thing, you chose to live in that area. It, and when you're saying you live in this state, in this area, and then you have a claim down here and it's, you know, or a fraud or something, it's just a natural thing. There's a higher payout in this specific area of Florida. So now you're saying you live up here, but you're filing claims down here, and you're causing everybody else's rates to go up. And that's what's happening. There is some really good news that a lot of companies have implemented a lot of uh, different programs like LexisNexis, and that's something that started happening in New York and New Jersey. Um, those are states where they do a lot of uh, the, the zip codes are all messed up and they, you know, prices are higher everywhere. What that does is it's kind of running a background check. You'll notice when most companies you talk to, they'll say, we'll run a consumer report. They're basically checking to see if you live where you live. If you don't, you guys are used to something called proof of residency. And that's something you do when you move, when you have to get like proof. I have a cable bill. I have this bill. Well, the smart insurance companies are going to require you to carry a lot of information. So you're going to have to approve a cable bill and a electric bill at the same time. And it has to be in your name at this address, perfectly matched in this square little box, or we don't touch it. Okay, you're going to notice that with them. So if you're new to insurance, if you're a young driver, if that LexisNexis pops up and you don't have any bills, you just got to move on. There's nothing you can do at that point. Don't get mad at the company. They're actually trying to save you money. Once you've gotten it established in a place, get a couple bills in your name or at least have your parents put your bills on your name um, and then just contribute to that part. Then you can go back to that company six months from now or however long it is and then show them the proof of residency. Don't get discouraged when you run into something like that. That's for protection for your normal insurance person or for your normal person in Florida. That's some of the reasons that they're high, but I wanted to cover, and I'm sure you clicked on this video, to watch the, the recommendations. What type of insurance does Florida require and what type of insurance should you get? I see a lot of stuff online where people say, oh, the minimums, they're 10,000 per person, 20,000 per accident. What does that mean? 10,000, it's called bodily injury. Okay, if you haven't watched my uh, Insurance 101, if you don't know what bodily injury is, go uh, watch my Insurance 101 video. So BI limits, it's 10,000 per person, 20,000 per accident. <laughs> I don't wanna tell you this, but this is, this. I mean, cause this could hurt you in the end. That's not required in Florida, okay? You do not have to carry bodily injury. It's just not required. You get to a spot where you don't have the funds and you just got to drive, you got to get to work. I understand it. I've, dude, I was, I had 
two speeding tickets and I was a little dragster kid when I was 18 or 16. You know, I used to race between schools and all that. And I just didn't make good decisions. Now I, I drive like a normal person now. You know, I don't, I have zero tickets on my license. It's perfectly clean because you start to realize that affects what you pay. And I would rather be a safe driver and not pay an extra $100 a month than to have fun and race my car <laughs> and then get all these tickets. Anyways, bodily injury is actually not required in Florida. The only thing that you have to carry is property damage, PD, okay, and PIP. And that stands for personal, personal injury protection, protect. Bodily injury is if you injure somebody. If you, if I hit your car, or I, let's just say I'm driving down the road and I hit, I run into my sister. She's driving down the road, boom. I hit her by accident. Oops, I'm sorry. She's hurt. She goes to the doctor. She says, oh, it's a broken arm. I broke my arm. I just bumped it hard. That's bodily injury. If you don't carry that, you're not covered. However, if she has insurance, the PIP, the PIP over here, okay, that will pay 80% of her medical up to $10,000. That's the most common one. If she has insurance, sure, the insur her insurance is probably going to pay it, but they're still going to come after you and say, hey, we just had to pay this $10,000. We want you to pay us back. Okay, we paid 80%, so you owe us four or five grand or whatever the cost was. So now you're in a legal battle. It's kind of annoying. Always carry bodily injury. Always, always, always carry bodily injury just to be safe. If you're in the situation where you can't carry it at all, you don't have the funds, it's just not there. It's called uh, basic insurance, or um, I believe it's called it's standard and basic is what they offer. So the basic insurance for Florida is no bodily injury. You have to have property damage. You have to have PIP. Uh, property damage is going to cover 10000 or more if you choose to do more. Bodily injury, if you injure them, they're hurt. Same scenario. My sister, I ran into her car, her broken arm, it's $5,000, okay? My bodily injury, if I do even the state minimum, is 10000 per person. So if her friend was in the car with her and she had the same scenario, or broken arm too. So it's 10000 per person in that car up to a maximum of 20000 1020 is what they call it. Okay, that's, that's what most online things or most people say is the state minimums recommended if you can't afford it and you got finances real tight always 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 start at least 25,000 per person 50,000 per accident you would be so shocked how little of a difference the price makes between the 25 and the 50 okay and then most commonly the insurance guy is going to have this half typed up by the time you say it because the second you say 2550 it pops in his head 25,000 property damage sure you can go down to 10,000 but that's so inexpensive to change most people that don't have the extra income do 25000 a person, 50000 per accident for bodily injury, property damage, which covers the car. So I hit my sister's car. It's her property. I damaged it. I'm going to cover up to 25000 So if she's got a, you know, a Hyundai, you know, I'm pretty much pretty sure I'm covered that, you know, a Hyundai Sonata. If, if you get this quote back and you said, okay, I got my bodily injury, I got my property damage. Um, you know, I've got my personal injury protection, which you have to carry. It doesn't matter what you do. It comes with it. Um, it's required by the state. So I've got bodily injury, property damage. I've got my PIP. I'm good. Okay, how much is my bill going to be when you call the insurance guy? Oh, he says it's going to be $75 a month. That's not bad. I can afford that. Now think in your mind, is that enough coverage? How do you determine how much coverage you need? The easiest way to think about it is you always want the insurance company to look better than you. My income is here. Let's say I make 50,000 a year. That's pretty decent. I don't own a home. I'm renting a house or renting a house. I've got my car paid off, so that's an asset. I don't have to um, to make payments, although it's a liability in the finance world. But but to me it's an asset cuz I I don't own anything on it and I could sell it tomorrow for $10,000. If you cause an accident, and let's say my sister's driving a, a medium, pretty nice BMW, that's $30,000 car. Right? I totaled it out. I've only got 25,000 property damage. So now where does the other 5,000 come from? It comes out of my pocket. I gotta pull out my wallet. The insurance companies just say, you gotta pay this. If she doesn't have the correct coverages to cover what I can't cover, 
guess who's coming after me? Sister. <laughs> or her insurance company, even worse. Because they're used to doing that. They're going to take your money. Make sure that you try to get these coverages as high as you can with, with meeting your means of income. Keep in mind, like we said, the insurance rates in Florida are going to be higher than normal. So these are just your basic coverages. There's a lot more stuff that you can carry. Let's go into the PIP a little bit. Personal injury protection. What PIP is, it covers 80% of your medical up to $10,000. However, if you're uh, someone that doesn't have a lot of medical and you want more than that, most companies will let you in writing. You have to purchase the first policy and then in writing you can add, hey, I want to increase that PIP from $10,000 to $50,000. So you can actually bump that coverage up yourself. Personal injury protection, it'll pay 80% medical up to $10,000. There's different packages that you can purchase. It's work loss. These all come with it, but you can, you can increase it. I believe the work loss is like $200 per week up to you know X amount of weeks, as long as it doesn't max out that $10,000. It's always gonna be $10,000. As long as when you get hurt in that accident or, or when someone in your car gets hurt, it doesn't go above that $10,000, so medical. Let's say I, I broke my thumb, okay? It's gonna cost me $4,000 to get a cast. Okay, $4,000 to get my thumb fixed. <laughs> I can't work now, I, can't, I, I was a professional texter. <laughs> I don't know, I'm a professional game player. Okay, I can't play my games. I'm gonna get a little bit of work loss. As long as that doesn't max out at that 10,000, you're good. Once it hits 10,000, it's gone. Okay, it's not a big coverage, but it's there to protect people. Florida is one of the highest insurance states that has uninsured motorists. It's got the most uninsured motorists. A lot of it's visitors, a lot of it's motorcyclists. At the time, if I'm not mistaken, you're not required to carry insurance on a motorcycle. You've got a lot of uninsured motorists. That's going to cause some of those prices to go up because now if I hit you and I don't have insurance, I'm gone. <laughs> See you guys. Good luck. Hope you got good insurance because I can't afford it. I couldn't pay it. I'm driving illegally. I took off. Or, or, you're, or you're just in that scenario where you just bought the car. You didn't realize you didn't have insurance or your insurance lapsed because your credit card expired. Whatever the case is, it, it went bye-bye. Okay, You don't have insurance. That is a huge thing in insurance. It's so big of an issue in, in Florida right now that one thing a lot of people don't understand, the state is tied to the insurance companies. They, they communicate. You're with Geico and your insurance laps. Do, 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 do. Hey, do, 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 do. <laughs> they've got an insurance. Okay, we'll, we'll give them 30 days. 30 days later, do, 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 do. no insurance, no insurance. Send them a letter. You have until this time to get insurance or we're revoking your license. That's how big of an issue it is in Florida without having insurance. How do you protect yourself against something like that? You've got uninsured motorist, UM, and underinsured motorist, UIM. Okay, uninsured motorist means you're protecting yourself against the guy that has no insurance because Florida does have a high risk. When you quote these, always quote with the uninsured motors, but keep in the back of your mind, this might, this might double the rate that they quote you. But when the guy comes back and says, it's $3,000 for six months, would you like to pay it in full? <laughs> You're like, well, click. No, don't hang up the phone. Say, well, how much is it without the uninsured motors? That alone, sometimes I've seen it as low as 10 bucks. Okay, but I've seen it as high as $300, $400. That coverage alone could make or break it depending on the area that you live in. Uninsured motors, what that does, let's say I hit my sister again. Boom, crash, broken arm. Okay, I don't have insurance, crap. Boom. Sorry, sis, <laughs> I'm gone. No, let's, let's, let's say I'm nice. Okay, I come out, it's like, sorry, sister, I hit you. Oh crap, my car expired. I haven't had insurance for two months. I didn't know, I, you know, it just didn't happen. I never got the letter from the state. The communication wasn't there. I, it was just a mistake. She's got a broken arm, now what? I, I gotta, I gotta pull out the pocket. Here you go. If I don't have that, if I, I look, if I got my, got two, uh, sorry, sorry sister, got $3. <laughs> I don't know, I, I, you're gonna have to bill me. 
Okay, so now she's responsible for this bill, and I gotta pay her back. Well, her insurance is gonna touch her. She's like, oh, well, you don't have insurance. They didn't have insurance. What do you want us to do? We're we're not here to cover that scenario unless you buy uninsured motorist medical insurance in the case that the person that hits you has no insurance. Underinsured motorist. When you're getting into the coverage that I'm going to mention early, later, which is your higher limits, the 100, 300, 250, 500, we'll go over that, you're going to want to have protection in case somebody hits you that has either no insurance, uninsured motorist, or they have less insurance than you. Okay, They're carrying the state minimums but you want to make sure you're protected just in case something like that happens. So you want to have underinsured motorist. That's going to pay you the difference between what you're carrying and what the other person is carrying as well. For example, underinsured motorist, we'll go into that. I hit sister, I've got the minimum, my minimum, 10,000 per person, 20,000 per accident. Arms broken. It's $15,000. It's a beautiful cast. It's got sparkly stuff all over it. <laughs> okay, so the, the, the medical bill is now $15,000. I only have $10,000 per person. That's one person. So I've maxed out. I got $5,000 left. I'm still responsible to pay that $5,000, but she needs medical attention now. She's got to have the sparkly sparkles. <laughs> if she had underinsured motorist, of 25,000 per person and 50,000 per accident. Now she's covered for that extra 5,000 because it's not going to max out until she hits the 25,000. I covered 10, she her insurance covered 5. Now it's their responsibility to come after me for the rest of it. Same scenario. Let's say I broke her arm, broke her leg. She's in the hospital. She spends a night in the hospital. She's got $50,000 worth of medical. She's maxed out at $25,000. I'm maxed out at ten, So I pay ten. Hers pays twenty-five. So she's covered for thirty-five of it. But the, the thing is, now there's $15,000 left. Not only are they going to come, come for me for the extra five that we missed, but they're going to come after me for the additional um, twenty or $15,000 that we didn't get as well. I know these numbers. There's a lot to share here. Um, I don't want you to get confused, so let's let's kind of back off here. If you guys have questions, send me a message, put a message in the comment. I'd be happy to answer them. I'm sure I know what one of the major questions is, where's the best place to get insurance? I'll go over with that with you guys in a little bit, um, the different companies that you can look at, and then what you should look for in a company, because you have to hire them as well. It's not just getting the best deal. So we've got bodily injury, property damage, PIP, UM, UIM, and then there is also med pay, okay? Medical payments. Okay, medical payments is similar to PIP. There's no limit to it. You can do 5,000, 10,000, um, I believe you can go as high as 50,000. You'll have to ask, each company's different. But that will pay anyone in your car, it'll pay the medical up to that amount. So let's say, hit sister, broken arm. Her best friend is in the back seat, broken arm. Person in the front seat, broken leg. There's 4,000 here, 4,000 there, 6,000 there. Let's say I did a f medical payments of 5,000 per person. So I'm covered, my person in the back seat's covered. The only person that isn't covered is the one that I said is 6,000. They'll be covered up to 5,000, and then the additional 1,000 would have to come out of, um, of the other person's insurance. If you have your own medical insurance, call them. Find out if they cover car accidents. If they don't cover car accidents, then that may be something that you want to cover. Or if they might offer you that option to add that onto your policy. It's just simple. It's medical. What should we cover? There's there's other stuff like towing and road service. There's um, comprehensive and collision, which I hope you guys know what that is. It's full coverage. Okay. Comprehensive and collision means the car's covered no matter what happens. My fault, their fault. Who cares? As long as I didn't purposely run it into a wall or, or file a, a fraud claim, they're going to cover it. I'll, I'll, I'll do a quick scenario. So comprehensive, best way to think about that, car's not moving, that's comprehensive. The only time it does cover is if you hit an animal. That's something that's more vandalism, theft, uh, some acts of God, something happens, it's you know sitting in storage, uh, or it's sitting in there and winds come and knock everything around. 
glass. That's comprehensive. Now, there is an additional to comprehensive. If you're purchasing the comprehensive, you can add something called full glass. The windshield is automatically covered no matter what, no deductible. That's all Florida policies. Um, it could change. I doubt it will. They seem to be pretty happy about it. It doesn't cost a lot. One of the secrets to insurance that some companies do, I'm not telling you to add this just to get a better deal, but I'm telling you, think about comprehensive. Even if you're an older car, ask them, you know, how much would comprehensive cost? I've had it where you're in this little bracket here and you're, you're at the top of the little bracket and you add that comprehensive in, the, the cost is so high because you're in that bracket, but you add the comprehensive in and then it bumps you up to the next bracket, but then you're at the bottom of that next bracket. So I've seen the prices actually drop when you've added comprehensive to it. I'm not saying that's a way to cheat it, but I'm saying it's definitely a way to look into see if that's an, a coverage that you may want. I mean, why not? If you get it for cheaper, you might as well get more coverage. Collision. Pretty plain and simple. If there's a collision, cars collide, then it's covered. Okay, you're up to the value of the car. Okay, all insurance is actual cash value as far as auto goes. So the older your car gets, the less it's worth. But Mark, my car, it's getting older and why is the price not going down? My price is going up, but my car is getting older. The older that car gets does not change the cost of the repair. Okay, you drive over to the mechanic today, it's going to take them four hours to fix that radiator. It's going to take them $250 for the radiator and you're going to pay $700. Okay, your car's 20 years old now. It's still going to take them four hours to fix that radiator. It's probably $350 now because the part's so old it's hard to get. You're going to pay over $1,000 for that repair. Keep that in mind. It's not necessarily the value of the car. It's because the repairs don't change. You just got to weigh the pros and cons. If the value's there, do it. If it's not there, don't do it. But check it. You know, it never hurts. Start at the top. Do the best coverages, the best options. Say, I want to start right at the tippy top and let's work our way down. Let's find where I'm comfortable and where I like the payments to be, but also gives me the maximum coverages. Find out if you need medical. If you don't need medical, don't put that in there. You know, if, if you're going to have a lot of people ride with you, then maybe you want the medical to cover them as well. I'm going to try to slow down. I know I'm going so fast. I don't want this video to be 50 minutes long. <laughs> I want to try to make sure I cover everything though. Your bodily injury. This is where everything starts. Your, your normal one, so minimum, nothing. You don't have to carry a bodily injury. Okay, the next step, step one, you know, is 10,000 per person, 20,000 per accident. Okay, the next level, we'll just say level two, is 20,000 per person, 40 or 25, 50, however they do it now. And then it's 50, 100, 100, 300. 250, 500, and some companies do higher than that. Most of them stop at the 250, 500. Where do you need to be? Find, find the finances. Figure out what you can afford. Okay, if you if you have, you know, college student, not a lot of assets. Try the 25, 50, or the 50 and the 100 if it works. If it if it's you know it's at a good spot, don't just say you know that's enough. I'll stop there. If you can carry more coverage, do it, because you never know what could happen. You don't want to make that mistake, fall asleep at the wheel, or reach for a pen, get in an accident, and then find out you're in debt for the rest of your life because of one mistake. If you have the right coverages, they're going to go after your insurance company and not go after you. So the typical homeowner, okay, when you own a home, that's an asset or a liability, depending on who you talk to, but that's considered an asset to the bank. <laughs> But that, that's something that you want to protect because if you have equity, let's say I bought a house for 200000 two years later it's worth 250000 okay, I've got 50000 in equity. So when I cause an accident, I want to make sure I have at least 50000 to cover so they won't sue me for my house. Protect what you have, guys. I mean, if you've got, if you've got assets or if you've got you know, stuff that you can protect, do it. The average homeowner will carry 100,000 per person, 300,000 per accident, and 100,000 for property damage. Perfect coverages. If you have 
a more valuable home or a lot more equity in the house, then you may want to do what I carry, which is 250,000 per person and 500,000 per accident. I also carry property damage of 100,000. Sure, I could put it to 250, but the odds of me sideswiping a Ferrari and then turning around and hitting a Mercedes at the same accident are gonna be very slim. I've got my bodily injury if I hurt somebody, 250,000 per person. I'm covering that guy, I don't want him to sue me. 500,000 per accident. If he's got more people in the car, I'm covering those people as long as it doesn't max over 500,000. Property damage, if I damage their car, even if he's driving a Mercedes, I want that car covered. 100,000, that should be sufficient. If you're in Miami, yeah, there's some cars that are worth more than 100,000, so may, maybe. <laughs> That's what I personally carry. I carry the uninsured motorist, okay? If I get hurt, I want coverage. If that guy doesn't have insurance, I want to know my kids are going to be covered. My family, my wife, me. The medical's covered. 250, 500. You know, it, find out if that fits you. If, if that's too expensive, see if your medical covers it. Underinsured motor, same thing. 250 per person, 500,000 per accident. Those are really good coverages. Okay, those are what it is. Why, why not do a million per person and 10 million per accident? One, they don't offer it. Okay, most companies max out 250, 500. Why do they max out there? Because there are a lot of people, if I've got 300, 400,000, you know, if, if you're a young driver and you're looking at, you know, your parents or you're looking at your friends and family and say, hey, I, I have that, I have assets, I don't want to lose them. After that, you'll get into something called an umbrella. Okay, if you don't know about that, I'll make videos on it. Um, it's coming. If you have questions, send me a message. I'll still answer them for you before I make a video. I'm not worried about that. But that will cover more assets beyond just the car insurance. If that's the scenario, you really need to talk to the agent. Make sure make sure they have your best, you know, your interest at heart. One thing that I do like about um, some of the companies, they're starting to lean towards the customers. So they're starting to realize, okay, it's not just do you like the coverages? No. Okay, goodbye. Do you like the coverages? No. Okay. Do you like the coverage? Yes. Okay, come by. Some companies are actually leaning towards what does the customer really need? You know, what questions do you have? How can we answer them? Agents are the best person to make sure you have the better coverages. I don't want to put agents down because most of them are really good people. Most of them are have you in the center of their focus because they want you for life. If they take care of you, then when your kids start driving, they're gonna take care of your kids. And if that happens, I mean, it's a lifetime business. Those are the smart agents. You will get some of those agents that just absolutely say, no, you need to cover the top coverages because I, I, I get paid on that, right? I get a commission, I get 5% or 6% of that sale. Okay, yeah, I, I, I keep that in mind myself. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm a salesperson in insurance. I want you to carry the higher coverages, but I'm not gonna take advantage of you because of that. If you can't afford it, why would I force you into buying something you can't afford? If you don't have the assets, why are we having you cover all this stuff? If you got your own medical and no one rides with you, why are we making you carry this extra insurance? Be, be knowledgeable yourself, but, but put it in their hands. You know, the agents will take care of you. If they're not, Hey, get a second quote. Get three quotes. I, I have a rule of thumb. Three quotes and done. I always tell them, I'm going to call you, this person, and this person. I'll tell them. I, they're, they're not here to cutthroat, okay? They know what you do, and they'll, I mean, they'll try to sell you on it. Don't get them wrong. But I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to spend my whole day calling these companies. I'm not going to waste everybody's time, waste my time. You know, as soon as I find, if I don't find in those three companies at least a price I like, then yeah, I'll move forward and go forward. But if I get the price I want on company one, I, I might take it. You know, nowadays insurance is getting to be where you pick up the phone, you call 21st Century, Farmers, Geico, um, Progressive, All States. Um, you know, most of these companies they own each other. You know, you got Farmers owns 21st Century at the time. Um, you know, Allstate owns insurance and Geico, I don't know what Geico owns. I mean, each of them have different subdivisions because they have kind of their, their direct market and their non-direct market. So you're going to find that with different companies. Don't worry about finding who owns who, who cares, okay? You want the top three companies in, in, the, in the nation right now? I think the largest, I'm not saying they're the best companies, but I think the top three largest, what is it, um, 
State Farm, Allstate, and then Farmers, I believe, are the, t are the biggest companies. So what's the benefits to going with them? They're less likely to raise their rates and fluctuate because they have so many people that they spread the risk across. When one guy has an accident, you're never going to feel it over here. Okay, but when you get with your, your small company where they only have a couple little people, this guy has an accident, boo, your rate goes way up because they can't afford it. They have to they have to pull the money back in. You guys think, you know, you would think that these insurance companies are making hundreds of dollars on you. They're not. By the time they're done fighting the other companies and the time they're done advertising everything, dude, they're making five cents, ten cents. Ten cents is a gold and a gold mine with insurance. Because the way they make their money is they're going to put that money and invest that five cents. You get 10 million people that do five cents, you're going to make some good money. Keep in mind, most companies are going to have your, your, you, know, you in, the, in the center of it all because they know without that, it's just going to break apart. Okay? If you're not comfortable talking to the person, get off the phone and say, hey, I appreciate your time. i got to move on. Click. Yeah. Before I wrap up, I'm just going to go over one quick thing here. Um, you know, like I said, if you have questions, give me a message. I pulled up a, um, it's called valuepenguin.com. Um, I've never been there before. I am assuming they're like every other company. They just want you to click that get a quote. I mean, that's that's how they make money. They, these guys make 10 to 15 $20 on you just filling out your information. It, it, it is a benefit to you, although you're going to get 20 phone calls. So if, if that's what you're looking for, if you want to quote a bunch of places at once, do it. But I don't want my phone going off like crazy like that. They're going to be, th it, it does stop. I mean, I think it's three or four, three to five days of just call, 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 call. Hey, I want to sell you. Hey, let me quote you. Hey, it, you know, if that's what you're looking for, great. But they do say, uh, let's see on here. So the top ranked in Florida, it says Farm Bureau is at the time, uh, this was posted. doesn't say but I think it was last year uh, I think it was in 2015 but uh, Farm Bureau average is $381 for annual annual premium that does not sound likely so take that with a grain of salt um, USAA um, they are a good company in Florida specifically I think you have to be part of the military or some sort of serving because I don't I think it's 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 not anyone can join type company. Um, Geico, they're pretty competitive. Travelers, State Farm, Auto Owners, um, Safeco, MetLife, uh, Bristol West, which is owned by Farmers, 21st Century, which at the time is owned by Farmers, uh, Esurance, who's owned by Allstate, and then the next one's Allstate. Um, the General, a direct general, not my favorite company because they mostly do high risk stuff. Those are the list as far as like the top, um, you know, top 15. I didn't read them all. There's there's a bunch of them. But they do go through different zip codes. If you're in Jacksonville, Florida, um, Farm Bureau seems to be the best rate than Geico State Farm. As far as ranking goes, I always remember this one, Amica. Okay, they might be hard to get into, but they are one of the top customer service level rated companies. For insurance so I don't know what their prices are but they're, they're they're pretty up there auto owners progressive okay if you guys have a specific question let me know I mean I can put a link in here if you guys want to get um, you know different quotes if if you're interested in getting to them I've got um, you know I can send you a link to uh, to a company that uh, that will quote you I think it's five or six different companies but you will get those phone calls they'll they'll call you up and say hey send you over this guy he's going to quote you real quick even though you did it online they're going to verify it you're going to get five of those phone calls you can't ignore them because they're just going to keep calling the nice part about those is they they die off after about three days but something that you want to do i'll try to put a link in the description for you but if you're just curious at where you should be i'm not trying to sell you insurance okay i'm not trying to make a commission here or anything like that i've just you know i've got a passion for i'm trying i'm branching off of what i know you know and, and that's part of this youtube channel Hope this helped, guys. If you guys have any questions, let me know. If there's something I missed, 
bring it up. I'll put it in the comments. I'll put everything down there, all the notes, all the information that you might want to know, the different coverages we talked about. Um, I'll put descriptions in the bottom too so you can see the differences. If you know anybody, share this video with friends, family, teenagers if they're new to insurance. Go watch my insurance 101 video if they don't know about insurance. It covers most of this stuff here, but um, it doesn't go into the specifics for Florida as much. Let me know if you guys need anything. Otherwise, good luck and have a great one.